Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Women's Sports Matter podcast. My name is Gianna Bel Castro, and I am your host. Today, we have a very, 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 very special guest. Um, I am a huge fan of her artwork. We have Brittany Palmer on today. Can you uh, talk a little bit about yourself? Give a nice little introduction. Okay, well, um, thank you so much. My name is Brittany Palmer. I am uh, usually known for being the UFC Octagon Girl, which I have for about 13 years, but I'm also an artist and I'm assuming that's why you brought me here today. (laughs) I love your collection for tops. When I first saw the artwork, I was blown away. And when Jerry told me, um, like asked if I wanted to have you on the show, I go, oh my God, yes. like it's so cool. I when I was a little kid, I was collecting tops cards. Um, I have like three books full of them. So oh, wow. just to see like you know a woman designing cards for baseball and it, it being absolutely outstanding is just so awesome. Um, my favorite of yours is the Babe Ruth one. Yes, I love the colors of it yeah. so much. Can you talk about that one for a bit? So with each card, I mean, you know, and I can only just be transparent. And I think that that's so important as not only an artist, as a businesswoman, as just a person. (laughs) Um, You know, I I was into baseball, but I didn't realize I wasn't as into it as I am now, you know, and doing these cards, it's really been able to open my mind up to the sport and these incredible athletes um, to understand them fully, to make the card represent either a point in history or who they are, and um, it's really been just like an honor. So when I had to dive into Babe Ruth, there was nothing that stood out other than classic, you know, and he just is such a, such a important image in the sport. And, and I think, you know, in humanity, he just really left a footprint. So I wanted to keep his portrait very classic, you know, my classic portraiture style, just to give him that kind of respect um, that I feel that he deserves. Were you in Colorado the this past uh, our star All Star Week? You were. Yeah, I yeah. was in Colorado. I got to go to the Home Run Derby, the coolest thing ever. And to be honest, that was my first baseball game. I, I mean, it's a game um, that I'd ever been to. And so, and I have friends that are like, "That's your first baseball experience? You went to that Home Run Derby? Like to see? Uh, it was. It was." completely outrageous I like it makes it look so easy I'm like oh so they just be did they fly off the bat like that all the time and they're like no you know that was something pretty incredible to see and um I had two cards uh drop while I was there so I had Shohei Otani who not only was in the home run derby but who was also in the all-star game and then I did an all-star night card for Marcus Simeon and Adam Frazier uh, who both played in the game. So it was kind of a special, it was a very special weekend. My first baseball experience was when I was a little kid. Um, so my, both sides of my family are from the city of Chicago. My mom and her brothers grew up going to White Sox games all the time. So that kind of like carried on with my family. My uncle, who's also my godfather, was a bat boy for the White Sox in the 80s. So he got to like travel sometimes and do all that kind of fun stuff. So we're a baseball family. Like that's our that's our first love, I guess, you know, <laughs> the, the beautiful sport of baseball. Yeah. Um, it's just for a home run derby, like that to be your first experience. I mean, oh, my God, like Shohei Otani, Pete Alonzo, Juan Soto, like all those players in that one spot doing that derby was that's pretty cool. Well, and so, so Pete Alonso, so my boyfriend, Gregory Sip, who's also on the project, um, and he's an artist as well, he painted Pete Alonso's bats. So Pete Alonso's agent got us seats to go watch the Home Run Derby. And, you know, we were like, what seats could these be? And it's, he gave us the seats where all the balls go. So it's like, it's almost like Pete was batting for Gregory. And, you know, he ended up winning the home run derby and the bat that was painted was Gregory's. So we were just there and his mom was there and just to be a part and just see these balls just flying like, right. I mean, I I didn't have a glove. I was like, I could try with my hat. I mean, there's no way in hell I could have caught one, but they were close. They're really close. 
That's kind of like the perfect area to be in during the derby. I need to go to a game again. This is it. Like, I did all of my games in one. <laughs> like, we're good. It was so incredible. Like, nothing can top that. I work for a baseball team, too. So I get to – literally, my job is to watch baseball yeah. all day because I'm the live stream producer at the King County Cougars. It's like a semi-professional baseball team in Geneva, Illinois. It's actually a partner league with Major League Baseball. So, you oh, know, cool. instead of going through the minors, you play through the semi-professional league, you can get bought out, and then you go into the minors. I, we've had a few guys going to AAA – and stuff like that, or be, just being bought outright by different organizations. And then we always brag about, like, oh, we had Kyle Schwarber here for, like, two days, or yeah. we had Miguel Cabrera here for, you know, a, a nice amount of time. And it's like, win some games, too. Why don't you, yeah. <laughs> why don't yeah. you do that? <laughs> I got a joke about the the place I work at sometimes. It's a, it's, it's a fun time, but also it's like, sometimes I get bored watching baseball. Um... Because if it's it's nine innings, but it also could be more. Yeah. I've worked 15-inning game once. Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky because UFC, it's either three or five rounds, and that's it. Like, there's no going over time. Like, you're either getting knocked out in three rounds or you're – it's it's a call. Yeah. I mean, I – People complain about soccer. That's that's another sport that I like. It's 90 minutes plus stoppage time. And if it's a tournament where you're in the knockout stages, then there's extra time. And then there could be a shootout. There's, yeah. a, there's a difference so, in timing. <laughs> I think I've Googled, I Googled that the other day we, the, since soccer is on. Like, I, I'm not massive into the soccer universe yet but now apparently I'm just I'm, now I'm in the MLB world I'm like well maybe soccer is next maybe I'll paint soccer players but I like googled one of the longest soccer games oh my god what did they say how long it was it was a long time like I was just I like to ask random questions I'm like I wonder what was the longest soccer game ever and it's uh, actually googleable I don't remember what it was now but it was long it's just I I used to hate soccer um I got hit in the face when I was little, when I was goalie. <laughs> so I was like, I'm never hazard. playing. What? Yeah. Occupational hazard, I guess, as yeah. a goalie. <laughs> and this was when I was like fifth grade. And then flash forward to when I'm a sophomore in high school, I was the goalie for my JV soccer team. And I was like, I used to hate this, but now I, now <laughs> I love it so much. And it's like, oh my God, baseball and soccer are my two, two things that sport? are and dear to my heart. Um, I want to talk to you about your different, you know, I know you don't just paint baseball players, obviously. Um, can you talk about the other different artworks and, uh, collections that you have? Yeah, well, um, I'm, I originally, I went to art school. I studied classic portraiture and figure drawing and painting. Um, you know, oh, sorry, getting messages. Um, that's kind of where my bread and butter was, is painting portraits, rock and roll icons, you know. Um, I started painting because I was in a car accident when I was 21 years old, and I was a professional dancer before that. Um, and I, I needed a, a way to rehab, you know. I couldn't walk for three months. I definitely couldn't dance. And it was a way to escape the kind of treacherous demons that kind of would pop up when you're injured, especially at the age I was, 21 years old. I was very confused. I um, was living in Las Vegas. My father had passed, so I was just in a dark spot, and um, painting was a beautiful escape for me. And so I would paint to Jimi Hendrix. I would listen to Jimi Hendrix, smoke a bunch of pot, and paint his portrait over and over and over. And it kind of really got me, and I was just so obsessed with music that that was really the start of my art career is just painting rock and roll legends and, and listening to them while I'm painting them. So it's not only am I rehabbing through painting, I'm rehabbing through music, through art. And uh, it, that's kind of, you know, what my bread and butter was for a long time. And I think that, you know, when Tops chose me for the project, I think, you know, they had that in mind, you know, of, of being able to paint those portraits. When was the, the first moment where you realized, oh, I could actually, you know, make a living off of painting or, you know, when you first, when you had your first collection, what went through your mind also with that? So I was, so I was working with UFC still. I've been with UFC for like 13 years, um, maybe 14 now, shoot. 
I've been with them a long time. And so I, with the company, we, we started when Twitter started and Facebook, like I was at that age when I was in my early twenties that these, you know, social medias were starting and I was, be, I was able to jump on with them. And I had this notoriety with UFC. So I would paint Jimi Hendrix and I would post him and just, you know, something that I never thought, because I grew up in Vegas, there's no art culture there. It's barely starting there. Like, and it's only starting there because, you know, there's some really incredible, incredible creative directors and like friends that are coming from LA and they're really opening up the mind of Las Vegas, which is so fun to see. But back there, I never really thought art was in the path. I didn't come from an artist home. My mother wasn't an artist. Um, creative, yes, but not, you know, with the skill set. So I would post it online. And one day, you know, a fan, a UFC fan or a fan of mine was just like, that's so cool. Is that for sale? I mean, it's, it was that quick. And I was just like, oh, shit, maybe it is for sale. Like, I, can I do this? And then I would start doing the math. I'm like, okay, so if I sold two paintings a month, and it was $2,000, for, to for both of them, then that could pay a rent if I moved to LA to go to art school. And I was like trying to like make this a business. And, and um, you know, I definitely went around about it the wrong way because that's not how art works. You can't just be like, oh, well, I'm gonna guarantee you to sell two paintings at that time. So uh, I just saved all of my money and um, I worked as a waitress. Uh, I, right when I was able to walk again, I worked two jobs saved all my cash and then just picked up and moved to LA and was like, you know what? I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to go to art school. If it doesn't work out, I can come home, but I'll never know unless I do this. And so I did. In terms of picking a school, did you have your heart set on UCLA or was it like you were thinking about all these different places? I wanted to go to Otis. Otis is an incredible art school here in, um, it's like right by the beach that's what I wanted to, and maybe I still will. Um, I, I totally believe in the art of continuously, you know, advancing your education. And especially as an artist, there's no like really degree that you need, you know, like to be able to paint, there's people who've never been to art school and are incredible artists. And for me, it, it did very, very well for me. It helped me understand, you know, color value and the things that I use a lot in my, in my work. But Otis was my dream. The thing was with Otis, it is an actual school. Like you could not take off. Like they will kick you out. Like it's like, these are, this is when you need to be there. These are your assignments and you can't like be lag. Like the schools that I chose was, which was UCLA and then Brentwood was two different schools. They were a little bit more lax. It's like pay. And then like, if you don't go, that's your loss. Like kind of deal. It's not like against the school. Um, I mean, obviously you have to show up. But um, with my schedule, because I just had done the cover of Playboy and FHM and Maxim. So I was, you know, very young and I was touring and I was still working with UFC. So my schedule was really, really jam packed and um, I could only do what I could do. College application processes are tough. I've been through it twice. Yeah. Um, it, I'm going to be a sophomore in college and uh, COVID kind of like was a mess especially for where I wanted to go to school I was going to go to Indiana University Bloomington um mm -hmm. which if, if you would have asked me like three years ago if that's where I was going to go to school I would have been I either would have said I wouldn't have gotten in or you're joking because it just it it didn't seem like something that I would do I thought I told my mom freshman year of high school, I was like, I'm either going to go to COD, which is the community college by where I live, or I'm going to go to University of Dayton, because that's where everyone at my first high school went to college. And it ended up being, you know, the community college for a year. And then I get to transfer out and experience yeah. the city of Chicago. So I'm fulfilling my mother's dream, probably, you know, there having you kids There's no rules. The city. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... They didn't give me a place to live. They yeah. told me no. So you got, I got to find an apartment now. And, you know, cost of living in the city is crazy. I'm sure it's crazy in LA and, you know, on that side of the country, um, which <laughs> I'm on the struggle bus in terms of finding an apartment and roommates because uh, I'm sure people don't want a noisy podcaster to live with. Maybe. Maybe if you found another podcaster. <sighs> I'm sure, yeah, because it's Chicago. I, I'm sure they're gonna, <laughs> someone like me will be there. I want to ask you about, you know, being involved with UFC. I, 
I've been really thinking about how to form this question. I'm not sure if you've been asked about this before, but you know, people complain about there being ring girls and saying like it's against the feminist movement or whatever. I just want to know what your take on this is. Um, I mean, I feel like if they say freedom of choice, mm -hmm. no one's forcing me to be here. I love it. So I, I, I would hope that they wouldn't worry too much about something that doesn't really matter to them. Yeah. They don't have to watch it. No one's dragging them around the ring to make sure they do it. You know, we're not being, like I said, we're not being forced. I think that those, uh, you know, I'm all for the feminist movement. I think sometimes it could go a little too far when I'm just like, oh, no one's complaining on this side. We're having a great time. So don't take the opportunity away from women who in truly enjoy what we do. Um, I just think that it's a little tedious in my, in my honest opinion. So that's a great way to respond. Um, I mm -hmm. just I was I was reading a lot of different articles about it yesterday, you know, to to kind of prepare for today's interview, and it's kind of interesting, like what people have to say. It's 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 none they, of their business. It's like who cares? Like unless yeah. And the thing is, is that if whatever they can kick and scream, Dana's never going to get rid of us. This is it's it's a choice, and it's a. We have choices. Don't take the choices away because you don't think it's right. That is, then that's that's exactly perpetuating the point that you're trying to go against. Like it just doesn't like it doesn't make sense to me. I think it's it's a great question. A lot of people are afraid to ask it, and so you know, kudos for you because I think it's important to touch on subjects that don't just have to do with how do you keep in shape and all those things. Although those are great questions as well, but in the political world, or just like having an opinion about something that people seem to care too much about. Yeah, a lot of people have a lot of opinions these days, mm -hmm. um, especially like as one. Yeah, especially, you know, since I, I feel like the election, a lot of people were like, oh, let's all fight. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was definitely planned, I think. So um, it's really up to us to find a common ground with one another and know that humanity is doesn't matter who we are going for, we're all in this together. So at least respect each other as human beings, not necessarily at our political views. That's very well said. I, I also wanna ask you like, how long do you see yourself um, being involved with the UFC? Well, that's a good question. Um, it's hard because I love the sport. I love the people I work with. We've become a really tight family. Um, I don't feel that there is an age cap, but I also don't want to overextend my welcome. Um, who knows? I, I think that right now my art career is really blowing up. So when one starts to over, like when I'm no longer able to do it because this is so like, so if this is my art and this is UFC and this just keeps rising, I think naturally it's just going to progress. Like there's no reason to wipe the rut, you know, my body's in shape. I've, you know, I feel that I'm only looking better hopefully with age. And so it's not really a question of that. It's more like my time and when they're going to start like really starting to pull me in opposite directions. I've also seen um, just through like doing my own research that you've done a lot of stuff with different charities. Can you talk about your experience with those? Yeah, so I'm really lucky. I have a great relationship with AMFAR, the American Foundation for AIDS Research and UNICEF. Um, I and Janie's Fund with uh, Steven Tyler. So I donate artwork, which is such an incredible gift to not only be able to do what I love and create art, but to donate it for incredible causes. I've donated over $100,000 into charity through my artwork. Um, and these are beautiful organizations and um, beautiful events. And I'm looking forward to the world opening back up so we can do it again. Have you had um, different art shows across the pond? I feel like you've done some stuff in Europe, right? I've, I've donated to AMFAR in Europe. So we've done Milan. Um, I've done Hong Kong. We did Sardinia. Um, I have not had a show there yet, but I do have a dream like on, you know, in my hopefully near future is to like move to Europe for three months and paint a show and then have a show at the end. That's kind of something that I definitely want to accomplish in the next, you know, five years and do something like that. But I would have to team up with a gallery out there, I think, unless I'd self-produce it, which would be hard because I don't know that area. So I'd get a gallery out there and then I'd go set up shop for a couple of months and paint the show.
That's super cool. Do you have a, a specific country in mind or, or general area? I would love, like, I mean, for art, Paris would be just incredible to do it. I love Paris. I, it has the art there is beautiful. Um, Florence would be beautiful. Italy. I don't know. That's a good question. Paris is great. I've been there once. I went on a trip in high school with my yeah. French class. Um, I mean, it was, I liked Belgium more than France, but that's just, you know, we were only able to ex uh, experience Paris and we went to a few different art museums um, within Belgium and France. The Louvre is just, well, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. I, I went up front to go see the Mona Lisa. I was, um, my friend and I, I was holding onto her backpack or maybe she was holding onto my backpack, but we just, we just ran through the crowd of people to go up front to, to see the, the Mona Lisa. Cause you know, every single time there's gotta be a big crowd to see that tiny picture, which mm -hmm. I didn't even think it would have been that small, but I was so shocked. Yeah. It was just, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, um, that's what they say. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite kind of art or a favorite period of time where, you know, this certain kind of art was popular? Um, I mean, I love the art that came out of the 60s. I think that it's a, it's a very powerful movement, 60s and 70s, of just uh, more self-expression. Um. I do love art that's come out of the 90s, like Jean-Michel Basquiat. I, 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 it's, it just depends. Um, I have an appreciation for all art. You know, Caravaggio was way, I mean, that was the stuff that was in um, Florence and stuff. So it depends. All art is ultimately a transformation and it's, it speaks volumes of what was happening at that time. Um, I have favorite artists like Frida. I usually wear her, she's on my neck. She's an incredible artist, a, uh, you know, feminist, uh, female artist out of Mexico. And she was like the first of her kind. And she just really paved the way for other female artists, I believe. And um, yeah, I mean, as an artist, it's really hard for me to hone in on one. You know, I have just so many different types and styles. And I love to, you know, it, I'm looking in my kitchen right now, I have, I have Salvador Dali, I have Jean-Michel Basquiat, I have Dabs and Mila. Like, I just, I mix and match stuff all the time. I don't believe, like, in one time period. Do you have a favorite painting that you always like to look at and be like, this, this is some great art right here? <sighs> you know, I don't. I love Mark Bradford. All of his work is so powerful to me. Um... Rothko, his, just, his use of color and just uh, texture when you see it. Uh, Frida, Yayo Kusama, all of her infinity rooms are just out of this world. I love her mind um, and her work. Uh, Cy Twombly has some of the most beautiful abstracts that I've seen. Um, his use of white and just lines are just spectacular. So I, I don't. I could go to a museum and stare at one thing forever, and I could walk right by the other. It's just kind of depends. Is there a certain type of art that you haven't tried yet that you would like to in the future? Sculpting. Sculpture work. I think that getting into that realm, I'm curious to see how I would do. I know I did well when I was, like, in high school, and we I'd have sculpture classes, and I did pretty pretty well. So I would be curious to see how I would do now getting on a bigger, you know, physical big thing as opposed to the canvas. That's very interesting. I, I've never wanted to try sculpture because I feel like I would just be super, super bad at it. I'm not even good at any art. Well, I consider photography art, but... Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Fun. <laughs> photography is my, my art. Um, I'm not good at drawing. I oh, can't yeah. even write so <laughs> I can't write either and photography is a definite art I just there's something about photography that's it's super fun and it can be really 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 laid back and I love playing with lighting um is there some certain part of your painting that you like to mess around with whether it's shading or you know using a different color instead of using the obvious choice yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer in color. Um, I will make a face 
green, red, blue, and purple, everything, but the color of a skin tone. Um, it's just what I always have done in art school. I always thought outside of the box in that regard, because in art school, you really study the greats, um, which is a great way to learn how to paint is just study other, you know, not copy, but you study it and you recreate it. I always recreated it with a different color palette, you know, palette that is a signature that I'm not, I haven't tried to create a signature. It's just something that's naturally happened. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. Color is to me is a big part of my work. With the world starting to kind of reopen again, um, is there something that you are planning to do soon in terms of, you know, doing a new collection in a, in a new gallery or traveling somewhere, maybe in the U.S. or outside of the U.S.? I have an art show coming up September 16th in Las Vegas uh, at the Carnivale Gallery. This is a solo exhibition. Um, it'll be about 30 new works. Um, the show is titled High Frequency. The entire show is based on frequencies. So on crystals, mushrooms, um, butterflies, flowers, it's just gonna be a completely different feeling from my past shows, but also really healing. And I think, you know, after 2020, we really need to have a show like that, that it's more about things that have healed me in my personal journey and things I believe that can heal others. That's like super cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I like the way that you described it with the different frequencies and everything. That's that's Thank a you. that's a great collection to have. I'm sure that it looks absolutely awesome, like all your other works. Thank you. Yeah, it's looking good. I gotta get to the studio, and I just got back from Denver, so I'm in like my two day reset. And my assistant's gonna be pulling up here in a minute to unpack, and then I'll be hit, hitting hard in the studio, getting ready for the show. While you paint, do you listen to certain kinds of music? Everything. I listen to everything, depending on what I'm painting. If I'm painting things to get me in the mood of rock stars, I'll listen to that song. Or uh, with, the, with the healing show, I listen to really healing music, uh, Tibetan sounds and stuff, just to get me into the right uh, feeling and right frequency, I guess, while I'm painting it. So, you know, when sometimes if you look at a painting, people can they can start crying, they can go to tears. And that's just because the intention behind the artist, behind that painting was so strong and I wanna be able to capture that in my work. So um, yeah, I definitely listen to a lot of different music. Do you have like certain playlists set up for the different kind mm -hmm. of moods that you'd be in or the different kind of uh, genres that you're working with? Yeah, I do. I, I have painting playlists, I have meditation playlists, I have just, I have all over. <laughs> it's such a big part. I want to, since you said that you like to mess with colors, do you have a, like, a specific, you know, three different colors that you like using the most when you're painting? Um, well, red, yellow, and blue are just, like, the basic, you know, complementary, like, you know, those are the basic colors, and then just always one of those and then like a derivative of one so like if it wasn't red I'll do like burgundy or magenta or pink and then or if it's blue it's like purple or teal or turquoise and then yellow is like orange or yellow I mean there's really only so far you can go with that one so yeah I mean one of those three <laughs> the taking it back to the basics with the mm -hmm. the colors yeah so I know you talked about going back to school. Do you think that's something that you would want to do now or maybe like wait a little bit and, and see what happens? You know, after 2020, I thought that things were just going to kind of progressively do this, but they just went this. So I, it did not ease me back into this year at all. And I'm so grateful. I'm just so busy right now. I, can't, I literally, I've just got home. I'm home for a couple days and I need to paint my show that's coming up and then I'm gone again. So, um, it's, I gotta get through this probably year and then next, next year revisit that idea. Going back to school can be tough. I yeah. am, I am bracing for impact. I, I yeah. go back in like a month and a few weeks. Like yeah. I start on August 30th and then, you know, got to yeah. figure out the city and then figure out school and then figure yeah. out this show. It's all and about. Yeah. I mean, I, I did all school online this past year so I can get my first year of gen eds out of the way. And it's like, okay, 
I have deadlines. But I'm also not leaving the house because COVID. But I also have this show that I started during the pandemic. Oh, well, I also have to apply to schools and I have to write all these different essays. And it's like, ah, a lot of work. It's uh, it's a process. And then my sister's already talking about school stuff and she's going to be a sophomore in high school. And she's like, well, I want to go to UCLA or UC San Diego. And it's like, okay. But yeah. you do realize it's it's so much more than that. And it's college is a struggle. Yeah, no, I could only imagine. Ooh, I'm super excited, but also super stressed out. <laughs> I'm trying to, my goal is, you know, to, with this podcast, um, I talked about this in my episode from this week where I met a guy through work where he's the announcer for the baseball team and he's like 23 years old. He got mm-hmm. his job right away out of school. Why? Because he had a podcast at UC Santa Barbara where I guess they saw it and they were like, oh, we should make him the announcer of our team. And I kind of want to do this, this, um, you know, with some sports team or whatever. So trying to do this and then school, maybe I can combine the both of them, but I, I don't know what's going to happen. You could totally do it. It's really just up to you to believe that you can. I guess so. <laughs> I'm going to do a little lightning round of uh, quick questions before we uh, end things here. Do you have a favorite book right now that you're reading? Um, Big Magic uh, from the writer of, um, oh my gosh, I'm literally reading it. from. She did Eat, Love, Pray. Why am I forgetting her name? I have Elizabeth, no idea. Elizabeth, um... Elizabeth, something. (laughs) It's what I'm meeting right now. After going to the All-Star game or going to the Home Run Derby, do you have a favorite Major League Baseball player? Major League Baseball player, Shohei Otani. It's showtime. Showtime. A lot of people are are fangirling over him, rightfully so. Rightfully so. They should be. (laughs) He's awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, If... I know that you said you kind of want to dabble into different sports. If you could pick, a, you know, a different sport to, you know, paint their players, what sport would it be and why? Um, I would probably be basketball. Um, just because we have an incredible team here in L.A., the Lakers, and we have the Clippers. Um, you know, I, I think it's a very exciting sport, and I'd be interested to learn more about that one. If – you can live anywhere in the world, and this is not including Europe or the U.S., um, where would it be and why? I would probably live in Bali. Um, I think it's just a beautiful, magnetic place. Um, I Just to answer this question on Instagram, I did like one of those, ask me anything, and th- Bali is just so magical to me, and it's so grounding, and um, I've always had such an incredible time there. And finally... What would you tell your younger self, um, you know, about, like, is it going to be okay? Or, you know, especially with, I know, the the car accident, what what advice would you give to your younger self? I would tell her to be patient and be present and um, stop worrying so much about things that haven't happened yet. Stay so focused right here and enjoy every moment because you can't control the future nor can you change the past. So I think um, that would have been a really good piece of advice for me back then. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Like, this is so awesome. Um, no, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. You're so sweet. This was awesome. Do you want to give anything, a quick little shout out? Uh, where can people follow you on social media? Things like that. Um, you can follow me at Brittany Palmer on Instagram, at Brittany Palmer on Twitter, official Brittany Palmer on Facebook. Uh, my website's BrittanyPalmer.com. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. You don't want to shout out anything? Um, <laughs> my show is coming September 16th, Las Vegas. Stay tuned. And stay tuned for my tops cards. <laughs> Thank you so much. Woo! We did it. <laughs> we did it. All right. So I'm going to do my little outro. It's really quick. Okay. I promise. But it's also okay. really lame because I don't, I refuse to script my show. Like I refuse to write down questions or take notes. Everything comes from my beautiful noggin. 
Yeah. So this is going to be a very quick spiel. If you want to follow me on social media, guess what? You can. On Twitter, you can follow me at WSM Podcast. And on Instagram, you can follow me at Women's Sports Matter. Guess what? I am on Facebook now. Yes, a 19-year-old using Facebook. Who would have thunk it? You can follow me at WSM Podcast or just look up Women's Sports Matter on Facebook. I don't know how to use it. I The W. WSM podcast is the username, but again, Facebook is totally weird. I'm 19. I shouldn't be using it. It's for old, old, old people. A lot of my family is on Facebook and that's how they found out about the podcast. So um, I made one so they can, you know, stay updated with everything because uh, social media, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I'm also starting up my YouTube channel again because... When I switched over to Red Circle, they're like, hey, we'll auto-generate a video file for you. I'm like, okay, I'll I'll do that. So just look up Woman Sports Matter Podcast on YouTube and hit the subscribe button. We have six subscribers, so you should definitely subscribe to the podcast's YouTube channel. Also linked down below is a link to register to vote. You know, you gotta gotta just include that if the, if you're in the US. Um, also, if you're in the U.S., there is a link to find a vaccine if you want to get vaccinated. Woo! I'm Pfizer, and I kind of regret that now. Maybe I should have gotten Moderna, but they never gave me a choice. Um, there's a link down below, five miles closest to you. Not really sure if that would be the case if you live in, like, farm territory, but yeah. I don't have anything else to promote. Subscribe. Subscribe. Follow me on socials. That's all I got. Thank you again, Brittany, for coming on the show. This was so, so yeah. awesome. Um, and I'm going to end things here. Uh, that's all, folks. I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.